Thank you, Trishan. Well, welcome, everybody. Uh, my name is Gian Kambar. Uh, I'm joined by Sarah Stevens. Um, and uh, today we are going to be um, working, we're going to be working with um, Git, assuming that you don't have access to a computer that has Git on it. Um, and this a lot, this uh, today we're going to go over um, concepts about um, uh, explaining the, um, oh, sorry, my notes are all jumbled. <laughs> Um, we're going to be uh, looking at things about um, commenting on issues in GitHub, uh, creating a pull request using GitHub's editor, um, explaining the steps about what GitHub's workflow is like, and explaining, explaining roughly what a branch in GitHub is and how that differs from a fork and, how, and why that's important. Um, we're not going to be covering mark, Markdown. And we're not going to be covering things like adding images. Um, that can, we have uh, documentation for that, um, but that's that's what we're going to be covering and not going to be covering. Um, and uh, I'm going to turn it over to Sarah to uh, give kind of, give a bit of motivation uh, for why we want to run this workshop. So Sarah, go ahead and take it away. Hi all, I'm Sarah Stevens, pronouns she, her, hers, and I'm a facilitator for the Data Science Hub at the University of Wisconsin-Madison. I love all things carpentries, and so I've been involved in carpentries in a variety of different ways as well. So feel free always to reach out with to me with questions about carpentries things. But today we're here to talk about making lesson contributions, particularly in GitHub. Um, and so it, GitHub is this really useful tool that allows us to all contribute to the lessons. And that's one of the things that I think is really a feature of the Carpentries community is that these lessons are not built by individuals. They're built by large groups of, of researchers and individuals that come together to make really robust and useful lessons that are, you know, well targeted towards beginners or intermediates or whatever the audience is. But we don't have to depend on making it ourselves. I know that's one of the things when I joined the Carpentries community that I was so excited about is that I didn't have to rely on like what I thought was important to teach about any given tool. I could learn, see what others thought was useful for beginners and use that as a starting place for any lesson I was teaching on, on these topics. And so I really love the community source lessons that we have. And so all of these lessons are created through GitHub, which allows us all to contribute to the lesson. At the same time, Git and GitHub are not the tools that are the most beginner friendly for a lot of folks, and they're becoming more so. GitHub has made a lot of improvements over the past time time I've been using it and uh, making it a little bit easier for people to make contributions without necessarily having to know how to use the Unix shell command line and how to use Git in the Unix shell command line. And so that's what we're covering today. We want to show you how people can, without GitHub or Git installed and not knowing the Unix shell command line, can actually still contribute to the Carpentries lessons and help to create these lessons that are community sourced and, and robust for teaching learners. Um, and so that's the, the idea of what we'll be covering today and kind of the motivation for this workshop is that a lot of our community members don't have experience with Git or GitHub, but they may have experience with teaching, they may have experience with the tools that we're teaching, and we want to make that easier for them to contribute their knowledge and, and create these lessons that are the wonderful back to the, the Carpentries community. Um, did I miss anything, Gian? Anything you want to add? No, I think, we, I think uh, that pretty well covers it. And I think at this point, um, it would be good to uh, give uh, give everyone an orientation of where we're going, like the the space where we're going to be working. Um, and so, with that, I'm going to um, demonstrate. I'm going to show you what the um, uh, uh, an example using our lesson. So, um, first of all, uh, can anybody see, can everybody see my screen? Yeah, we see your screen, and on the left-hand side, you have the Python lesson, and the right-hand side, we mostly see your desktop. Good, good. And you can't see the chat window? I'll just nope. It. <laughs> it's kind of like hidden with blanked out things. Okay. Um, so this is one of our this is one of our lessons, plotting and programming with Python. Um, it's also known as Python Novice Gapminder. I know this text is tiny to see, uh, but that's what the URL says. Um, and uh, our lessons are 
freely available. You can go, you can always go to our lessons anywhere in the world and access them. Um, and each of our lessons contains um, episodes in which, uh, in which you have the narrative of the lesson. Um, and if you look at each episode, you'll find that uh, it has it has an overview block and it has a paragraph describing the narrative, and it will have code blocks um, that can give you information about the episode. And if you wanted to know how this was built, um, there is a, there are um, buttons that you can click that allow you to access the source the source code. One button that you can click is called Improve This Page. And I'm going to specifically open this in a new window. Um, and I clicked the wrong thing. Okay, there we go. And what I see is I go to, I'm in a GitHub repository, but I see, I see this little warning thing that says you need to fork this repository to propose changes. So I'm going to pop, I'm going to, I'm going to revisit this later. Um, but what I want to do is I want to show you what the what the source looks like because this this web page this web page is a GitHub repository it's where the source of this web page lives and if I go ahead and I click on uh, if if I click on this link up here that says Python Novice Gapminder um, I can see uh, the full web page or the the full source of the repository and it has a lot of folders in it, um, and all of the all of the episodes live in a folder called episodes. Um, so I can go ahead and I can click here, and I see I see a lot of folder I see a lot of files um, and uh, their name their name sequentially, and I know that I have the writing functions episode here, um, and so I can look for. Uh, writing functions here, and I see that this is the uh, this is the source for this particular episode. And when I click on the source, I can see um, a rendered version of the source code in Markdown. So it looks almost the same. Uh, there's just a little bit of styling differences. Um, and uh, what I want to see is I want to see what the source code looks like. So I can go and I can click on this button here, uh, display source blob. Um, that's the little angle bracket um, that you see uh, on the top on the top bar. And um, if I click on this, it'll show me what the actual markdown looks like. And again, you can see that it translates one to one exactly with uh, the content on the website. Um, and this is the this is the place where we um, when you want to make changes to a lesson, this is where you do it. Um, and uh, so this is where I'm gonna pass I'm gonna pass it back to uh, Sarah. Yes, uh, uh, to answer uh, Alicia asked a question. Um, blob, did I hear that correctly? Yes. Um, so if you if you hover over uh, this little these little uh, less than greater than symbols, um, it uh, it says dis display source blob. This is a specific uh, this is a terminology that's specific to Git. Blob is an acronym that stands for uh, binary large object, um, something around the, along those lines. Um, it's a Git thing. Uh, blob. If you can think of blob as file and tree as path, um, if you ever run into those terminologies. But for the purposes of this, it does not really matter uh, what this is. So blob is file. That's what this is. And so um, this episode in particular lives in um, lives inside the repository in the underscore episodes folder. And from here, this is where we can. Uh, try and edit this episode. And uh, if I want to edit this episode, I can hit the little I can hit the little pencil here. And what's happened is um, GitHub's helping me out, and it says I'm trying to make changes to a project I don't have access to. 
and they've created a fork of the project for me to commit my proposed changes to. Um, and if I submit a change, it will write a new branch to my fork, and I can send a pull request. That's a lot. Um, and so I'm going to let Sarah uh, kind of take it from here and explain what's going on and how we can um, and how we can use this in the in the context of um, of editing a lesson in a real world situation. Um, and before I do that, I want to know if there are any questions of what I've just showed because I know I went over it quite a, quite fast. Always waiting for questions. I have to wait for like um, an entire a, a quarter note from a doom metal track, which is like five minutes. Um, <laughs> so seeing no questions, I'm going to pass it on to to Sarah. And um, uh, yeah. Thanks for clarifying blob and tree. I actually have been using Git for eight years and probably didn't actually know the definitions for those. I see them places and I have a vague recollection of what they mean, but had never actually heard the definition. So that helped clarify things for me. Um, all right, so let me switch my, put my screen share on. I'm gonna share this window here, which sh will look familiar. It's also that same uh, repository that Gian has been showing us. Um, and so when what Gian showed us here was kind of what I like to think of as the front space of the lesson, the rendered beautiful version that is one that we teach from, and then the back end of the lesson. So that's how we actually, the files that actually create that beautiful website. Um, and those are all in this this repository in GitHub, so this page here um, that we're looking at. Um, and so as we want to create a lesson, we're going to want to make edits to the back end files so that we can make changes to the front rendered face, the actual lesson, right? And so to create a contribution, you might have been teaching. That might be the most common method that you've come across something that you want to change. You're preparing to teach or you're teaching a lesson and you're like, oh, I see a typo there. I see something that needs to be fixed. I want to contribute that back and fix it in the lesson. And so that's probably the most common way for you to find something you want to change. Another option, if you're like looking for ways to contribute to the lessons, is this help wanted page that um, the Carpentries has. And so this is where people who maintain those lessons and create lessons can tag certain certain issues in their repository as things they want help on. And so this is where we can go and look for different things that we want to do to help contribute to the lesson, things that need to get done for these lessons. And uh, that's where I started when I was thinking about what I wanted to change in this demonstration. I went to this help wanted page and I scrolled through looking at all the issues that are listed here and tried to find one that I thought would be easy enough for me to do as a demo and that didn't have work too much work done on it already because some of these had already been done a little bit. Um, and so I looked through and found one of those. And the one I found is this issue here. It's in that same Python novice gapminder lesson that, that Gian has been showing us as well. And so this is the, the web page for it. Sorry, this is the GitHub repository for it. And GitHub has so many different pieces to it. The ones we're gonna focus on in, in this demonstration are kind of this issues tab and the pull request tab and, and the code tab, those first three tabs here. And so the issues tab is where all of those listed issues, known problems with the lesson live. And sometimes they're discussions of things that could be improvements to the lesson. Sometimes they're like somebody found a typo and they wanna report it. Um, so anytime you find something that you wanna improve on the lesson, the first place to go would be to find this GitHub repository for it. Gian showed us one way we could get to the GitHub repository by clicking that improve this page. The other way I often get to lessons is if I know it's a software carpentry lesson, I'll go to software carpentry and then let me widen it so the navigation bar pops up better. So, um, and then in lessons, all software data and library carpentry have this lessons page that you can go to and it has a nice table that shows us the beautiful rendered version of a lesson and then the repository that makes the back end for it um, in this table. So anytime I wanna find the repository and I don't wanna click that improve this page button, sometimes I go to this, this table to find it. 
And so this ta this little click here will take me to that same place that I was before, the Python novice Gapminder lesson. And again, this is all the stuff that makes that web page. And if I were gonna report an issue, I could go to this issues tab and maybe I can look first to see if somebody else has already reported the same issue that I found while I was creating the lesson. But if they didn't, then I could click this new issue button and I could report that issue. We're going to focus on the second half of that is actually once the issue is reported, how you can actually make the change and suggest that change back to the lesson, which with is what's called a pull request. Um, and so let me go back to my issue in question. I actually think I've clicked away from it. So let me go back to the issues. I have to go back here. Um, I think it's 588 if I recall. Yep. So here it is. And so in this issue, somebody's suggesting a change to the lesson where they think there needs to be a few more lines of text in the initial function to show why it's useful to use functions. And so they've created an example and I told them I'm gonna actually use this, this, this change in a demonstration here today. Okay, so now I've got my issue that I wanna work on. Um, now I need to go and actually make those changes. So I'm gonna leave the issue up in one tab so I can reference it whenever I need it but I'm actually gonna go back to my repository here. And as Jian said, all of the episodes live in this episodes folder. So when you wanna make changes to those episodes of the lesson, the actual text and code of the lesson, it's gonna be in this episodes folder. And I should check, I'm pretty sure this is in the functions one. And I think that's the same one Jian even showed us earlier. Let me just double check. It looks like it's the functions episode. And so let me look these are all the files, kind of have short names for them, but they're, they're usually in order. And if I look for the one that talks about writing functions, that's probably the one I'm looking for. All right, and so now I'm in the right markdown file that I wanna make changes to. And here's where I get to jump into the editor mode. And so right now it's showing me this kind of rendered version of it, but I wanna actually edit it. And so I always think of this little pencil button as the edit button. It doesn't say edit on it, but if you hover over it, it says edit the file in your, in your fork of this project. Um, and so that's telling us we can edit it. So if I click the edit button here, this is GitHub's text editor. So it lets me make text edits. Um, it tells me a little bit, it says you're making changes in a project you don't have right access to because only the maintainers and other Carpentry staff can actually make a fit changes to the lesson, but I can still suggest changes even though I don't have right access. And so it tells me that it's gonna create a, a copy, which is calls a branch here, to my copy of the lesson, which is called a fork here. So there are two different types of copies. Um, and then so that I can suggest those changes back to the lesson with what's called a pull request. Okay, in my text editor here, now I'm gonna scroll down and see if I can find that first uh, function that they wanted to change. So right now it just says def print greeting, print hello. Oh, thank you, Jian. I did not notice that I had a fork already. So it did, it might've had to click the button to create my own copy on my account if I hadn't if I hadn't uh, already had one. I must have edited this lesson in the past and forgotten about it. Um, all right, so I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna copy the text that they, they changed here, um, that they suggested for this pull request. And I'm gonna copy it into the lesson. And I'm gonna make little edits because they actually have a typo there in that first line. So I'll fix it. Um, and so I'm suggesting before it just has said print hello, now it's gonna say print hello, the weather is nice today and print right question mark. Um, so starting some conversation about the, the weather in this function. And so this is the suggested change. And now I need to save it. So like in most text editors or Word or whatever we're used to working in, maybe we are used to like clicking the save icon or uh, typing control S or command S. Um, but in GitHub, the what's called saving is also called committing. So we're committing those changes to the, the repository, to the, the file. And so to actually save it, I can scroll down and here's where it has the proposed changes option. 
and you can see it has the little button that says propose changes. And what's cool about GitHub is we can also leave messages about what we've changed. And that's as part of the commit, as part of the save. And so by default, it says update 16 writing functions MD, but that's not a lot of information. So I'm gonna write a little more informative message for uh, the history of this, this change. And so added more print to greeting function. I'm going to say more print statements to make it a little clearer. And then I also want to credit the people who made this issue and link it to the original issue. So I'm going to add a little bit more description here. I'm going to go back here and it looks like at first there is the person who created this suggestion. So I'm going to say suggested by at first sir. I tried to fill in, but I couldn't find their name there. That's okay. It still will work. In issue number one five or five eight eight, and you can see this one. It is actually guessing right. This is the issue that we we had, were working on here. So I left a little information in my extended message here. This is my short message. This is like the extra stuff that I wanted to make sure that we have as well. Okay, so now I'm going to click that Propose Changes button. Here it's actually saving my changes. And it jumped me into this next page that has a pull request. And so this is where I'm actually suggesting the changes. It saved those changes when I clicked the Propose Changes button to my copy of the the lesson, but it didn't suggest them back to the Carpentries yet as changes. And so here's the information at the top. This is the original lesson. So this is the software Carpentry Python novice. That's the original repository that we're working with. And then here it's going to suggest it back to the the actual rendered pages. So that's the GH pages piece. And then here I'm suggesting it from my copy of the lesson, which is called a fork. We talked to, uh, Jian kind of hinted at that earlier. So, and I missed making a fork because I forgot to delete mine before I started. Uh, but so I had my copy of the lesson that's under my GitHub account. So it says S Stevens too. Um, and then when I made that change, it saved a version of it in what's called a branch. So that's a variation of the original, um, copy I made. And so it made, named that branch patch three in my instance, because apparently I've made other branches in the past that are called one and two. And so here, all my changes are saved in my copy on my repository in a copy that's called branch three or patch three. And here I can look and I can see a summary of the changes that I've made. So you can see that from the original file, I've added these two lines here. And so there's a nice comparison. I can double check that everything looks good. And then I'll go ahead and click the pull request button. And that's again, where I'm gonna suggest these changes back to the Carpentries, back to the software Carpentry Python Gat novice Gapminder maintainers so they can decide whether they wanna keep those or not. By default, that message that I had put, the short message, gets added as my um, my title for this pull request. And I, I think that's actually a pretty good title. And it also put the rest of my information in the rest of it. And anytime you make a contribution, it tells you a little bit about like if you're doing this for instructor training and keep in mind that all the maintainers are volunteers. So sometimes they don't get to things right away. Has this like helpful piece of text. Um, but we don't need that in our our pull request. Right. So, yes, go ahead. Um, I'm going to suggest um, Please. one thing. One thing about this is that um, it looks like a lot of text, um, but if you click over in the preview, mm. um, this text is actually hidden in a little dropdown. Um, so you can you, it. It's up to you whether or not you want to delete it, or you can leave it there. But it's a what way for yeah, based on Gian's suggestion. To, See what see what the contribution. Uh, it is nice is. that it's uh, it's hidden in this little menu, and it looks like a lot in this one. But when I submit it, it's going to look like this instead, and so it'll be all those directions will be hidden. And so I'll leave that text in, and you can see what happens uh, when I leave it in. And I do want to note that this is a, the preview is a way that you can check to make sure that your whatever you're writing, uh, it's written in Markdown, and so that you can check that. Uh, everything looks good, like the links work, um, and yeah, uh, if you want to do any formatting, you can. 
Thanks, Gian. That's a really good uh, addition because it's always good to check, especially if you're getting practicing with your Markdown, getting new to using Markdown um, as a, a text language, then it can it can be definitely good to check your preview as well. I, I think I usually do that right before I click create pull request typically too. Um, before I click this create pull request button, let's look a little bit more at what we have here. Um, so we have that text. I like to leave this allow edits by maintainers checked because that way if maintainers want to edit my pull request, it's a little easier for them to do so. So I leave that, that checked. Um, and then it gives some information about how many saves I made, which is that number of commits here, how many files I changed, if more than one person contributed to this this suggestion. And again, we can see my what's called the diff, the difference between the original file and the, the my changes that I'm suggesting. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and click create pull request now. And now you can see it's in this pull request tab. So it's listed as suggested changes. And now the maintainers can take a look at this. Maybe they think it's a great addition to the lesson and they'll take it. And maybe they don't decide that they don't want it. Maybe they, they like it, but they need a few edits to it. Maybe they want to change the text that's in there. They don't like the question mark right. They Maybe that sounds sarcastic to them or something. Um, and so, uh, here I'm waiting for review from the maintainers for them to decide what the next step will be. But I've suggested that change to the, the lesson. Okay, I think I'm gonna hand back off to Jian here. Let me stop my screen share. No one interrupted me uh, with questions, but please ask questions if they come up when I'm showing things on the screen. I should have mentioned that ahead of time. Um, but any questions that you had about what we just did in making that suggestion to the carpentries? Uh, Python novice gapminder lesson. Type in chat or unmute. Both are welcome ways to ask questions. Manisha adds a nice note that at this point, anyone can see the pull request and the maintainers will review and accept it. That's absolutely true. It's public, available now. I actually sometimes find myself looking through uh, pull requests and just giving feedback just because I'm like, oh, this looks great. One small change I'd recommend um, to kind of help contribute as well. So anyone at this point could review and look at it. The maintainers are the only ones who can um, actually decide to merge those changes into the lesson and keep them. All right, I'll hand back over to Gian to show us the next steps on working with GitHub. Okay, thank you, Sarah. Um, and so what I'm going to do is I'm going to break down exactly what Sarah did um, in her in her pull request because um, seeing it working like on the just just from the view of the GitHub editor, it doesn't really give you a, a sense of what is going on behind the scenes. Um, and because GitHub has uh, GitHub has uh, helped you in a little in a lot of ways. So um, if you recall from from my initial um, uh, from my initial uh, test of the pull request from my initial demonstration, um, you see that I have a note up here, and it said, "Oh." After I click the edit button, it says, hey, you're making changes in a project you don't have write access to. So we've created a fork of this project uh, to commit your proposed changes to. Um, and it did, it created a fork. So if I go over and I go to github.com, um, and I believe, uh, I believe that I should be able to uh, this is my own, this is a, a, a bizarro version of my own profile. Um, but I can see that today I have uh, a fork was created. So GitHub was not lying. It created a fork in my um, profile. And I can click on that and I can see that now this fork has um, my username, uh, which, which is my name spelled backwards, um, and Python Novus Gapminder and tells me that it's fork from Software Carpentry, Python, Novus Gapminder. And by default, it's on GH Pages. Um, and right now, um, I don't have any branches because I haven't created one yet. Um, and 
what I'm doing, what, what's happening here is uh, I'm in my own fork and I can edit it and I can event, when I do a commit, it'll create a new branch for me. And so what does this look like? What do, what do I, what, do, what does this look like diagrammatically? So I'm going to switch over to um, uh, kind of a diagram of what's been, what's just happened. Um, right now we have this uh, on the left. We have a we have a diagram here that represents um, uh, two GitHub accounts. On the left is the GitHub account. Um, on the left is the, is the uh, Software Carpentry GitHub account that has uh, the Python Novice Gap Minder um, repository uh, set at the GH Pages branch, and we have an example file uh, here. It just says hello. Um, I probably should have modified this to match up with Sarah's example, but we live and we learn. Um, and on the right here, we have my fork. Um, and I have uh, right now a GH Pages branch, and then I have a patch one branch. So what just happened was GitHub created a fork for me. Um, and that's copying the entire repository over to my account. And now I have the exact same content. Um, and when I make an edit, it's going to first create a branch, um, and then, um, making an edit, I make a commit on that branch. And that's what, that's what that looks like here. So the branch has the exact same, uh, commit as the fork, as, as, um, as these, uh, these GH pages branch, but it's in a, it's in a different part of history. And I can show you what that looks like. Um, so if I go back to my, to my edit, I can actually do anything I want here. So I can print hello, print world, um, and I can print I can do anything I want uh, because this is uh, this is my own branch, um, and I can click propose changes, and it's going to ask me to uh, make a pull request, but I don't want to because what I want to show you is that this branch is ephemeral. Um, it doesn't have to be, um, I don't have to do anything. This is my own, uh, this is my own commit. Um, and I want to show you that uh, when I look on my own fork, so here I have my fork, fork from Software and Carpentry Python of Gapminder. If I if I look at, um, if I click on this, on this button, um, like it's going to say what branches are available. Um, I don't see my own branch. So I'm going to click on, and this is where I really should have <laughs> practiced a bit more. Um, if I expand this, I can see like there are, I have five branches in here. So I click, click on here and I can see, oh, I have my, patch one branch. And I can take a look at that. And it's going to look at the same, look like the same thing, but I have a new commit here. And I have it's testing my own branch. And so I can see the changes that I made in this commit. And if I look at the diagram, um, this is exactly what happened. I forked, created a branch, and then created my own commit here. And so uh, that's exactly the same process that Sarah did. GitHub just abstracts all of this away when you're working on its editor. And the next step, to, the next step from here is creating a pull request. And this is the state that Sarah's pull, Sarah's branch is in. So uh, when we look at when we look at Sarah's uh, when we look at Sarah's contribution, this is the this is the state that we have. So I'm going to switch over to that uh, contribution. Um, 
add, added more print statements to the greeting function, and I can see uh, this is the state that, that she's at. We're merging into GH pages from patch three. And again, in the figure, um, oops, in the figure, we're creating a pull request, merging in from patch one to GH pages. And this is, and this barrier is here to remind us that it's not yet merged. We're waiting for the author of, for the uh, maintainers of the, of the source repository to merge it in. And once they merge it in, um, uh, Alicia has a hand. Go ahead, Alicia. I don't know. You can finish describing what you're saying, Gian. I don't want to interrupt that. Okay. Um, so once they merge it in, it becomes part of the source repository. And this is all, um, and this is a way of being able to, um, uh, this is the, this is the GitHub flow. Uh, you want to, uh, you create a fork, create a branch, make your edits in that branch so it's independent of everything else. And then you make a pull request and then the author can merge it in, uh, if they, if they feel it, it's up to, up to their standards. Uh, so, um, Alicia, go ahead and answer, ask your question or make yeah, your comment. I'm a um, um, beginner um, <laughs> a GitHub user, and so I want to be sure I'm understanding this correctly. So a fork is when you're putting it onto your own computer um, and you're creating or you're copying the repository onto your own computer. Is that correct? Um, no. So a fork is actually a GitHub specific uh, term. Um, it's a way of, a fork is copying the GitHub repository to your own account. So um, do you rem uh, when I had that message that I had a message, I wonder if I can go back to it. I wonder if I can go back to it. So I have this message that says, you're making changes in a project you don't have right access to. If I tried to make an edit to the, soft, to the Python novice Gapminder material, um, I can't do it because I don't have access to that account. I don't have right access to account, which makes sense because we want to make sure that our lessons are, have quality. If anyone could uh, edit these um, and put them into production, that would not be good. Um, so a fork is creating that um, uh, creating this in my own account. Um, let's see if I have that. Of course I don't. And so that's why it shows up here um, in Rav Z Python Novel Gatmind. That is my fork. Does that uh, does that answer your question? I do you have. A yeah. Follow? So if I if I had access to that repository. Could I branch directly without forking? Yes. Okay. Yes. <laughs> okay. And this, um, and this is the this is the model for. Um, so you can you can branch directly without forking. So you can imagine this fork um, goes away. Like if this were all um, one single one single account, you can get rid of this. Uh, this fork and GH pages branch and like have this line just extend to a branch. And then you would do the you can do the same exact PR process. Um, it's just a more formal way of doing it. Um, but this is assuming that you don't have access to the account. And this is also provide like giving you kind of safeguards um, so that you can you can use your fork as a way of exploring things um, uh, without without um causing any unintended consequences on the main on the default account uh does that uh does that clarify things or should i, I can i yeah clarify no further? that that was great i i have one additional follow-up is can you include multiple commits in one pull request mm. yes and we will be demonstrating that later okay um, okay great thank you yes uh, but great questions. I'm glad. Uh, thank you for asking that. Um, 
And yes, as Manisha has has um, has commented, uh, creating a PR or pull request means proposing a change. Merging the PR or pull request means accepting that change. And generally, anyone can create a PR or pull request. Only authorized maintainers can merge. And this is this is why we this is how we make sure that uh, the carpentry's lessons are of high quality. Um, and then the question becomes like, okay, so what happens when you fork a repository um, and you have your pull request accepted and um, uh, everything's merged in? Um, you have your pull request accepted and the changes are merged in. Um, then suddenly your fork becomes out of date, um, and how? And then um, when you want to make another branch, when you want to make another change, um, you have to uh, update that branch. And there is a button on GitHub that will allow you to do this, and, I, and we will demonstrate this later. Um, this used to be very difficult, but it's gotten a lot easier in the past few years. Um, as I said, there is a button to do this. And this is partially why you why you create a branch, because if you create um, if you create a branch, you can keep updating the default the GH pages branch without having to disturb any ongoing work. Um, but this is what GitHub Flow looks like in a nutshell. Um, and again, all of this, these steps, fork, branch, and commit. This is all done in one step on the GitHub command line, uh, on the GitHub uh, editor. Um, so they, they've abstracted things uh, for you. Um, so with that, I'm going to um, see if the, ask if there are any questions um, to what I've just shown. And then um, I believe I get to turn it over to uh, Sarah uh, for the next step. No, oh, no. you're up next. <laughs> Ah, I am up next. Okay. So are there any questions to what I've just shown um, with these diagrams? Uh, did it make everything clear as mud or clear as an unmuddied lake? Okay. Um, so seeing, seeing no uh, questions, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to demonstrate Sarah and I are going to tag team uh, demonstration. Um, so I'm going to um, I'm going to show you an example of um, of making an edit to one of Sarah's um, uh, one of um, Sarah's lessons. Um, so. Doo -doo -doo. And I'm going to do it using um, using the improve this page button. So let me go ahead and share the screen again. Do, do, do. I shouldn't be singing along, but <laughs> um, okay. Uh, let me go ahead and clean things up, close windows so that things are not so distracting anymore. Um, oh no, go stop it. I want you to be gentle, okay? Be gentle. There you go. There you go. All right. Okay. So everybody can can everybody see my screen? Okay. Um, I don't see anybody saying no. Um, so Sarah has a repository called Version Control with Git, um, and it's called Git Novice Branch PR, and this is specifically to work. Um, uh, to work with Git in the Unix shell and talking about, specifically talking about things in um, uh, using GitHub. And so um, one thing that I want to do is um, I need to remind my, I need to take a second to remind myself where I'm going. So I'm going to actually open up a, a window. Um, yeah. Okay. So uh, do, 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 pay no attention behind. To the code EMD behind the curtain. Um, I'm going to take a look at the um, conflict uh, episode because I noticed something when I was browsing through this. I noticed a couple of things. Um, one thing I noticed is that 
oh, hey, this thing is a little, this looks a little weird. Um, I think it, it's kind of um, this, this, this formatting is weird. And I think I know exactly what's happening here. So I want to make a change. And I also see that I'm uncomfortable with this ordering of these, um, I'm uncomfortable with the ordering of um, uh, of this list. I want to make it alphabetical. So I'm going to make go ahead and uh, make make these changes. And how do I do that? Well, I can scroll up to the top of the file, and I can click on the Improve This Page button, which will uh, give me this happy little warning that says, "Hey, you want to edit this page? You need to make a fork to propose changes." If I were to do this directly from uh, the GitHub repository website, it would do the same thing that um, that Sarah and I saw earlier. It would just automatically create a fork. Um, but, but because I went directly to the edit page uh, from a link, it asked me permission to do this because maybe I didn't want to do it. And so again, I get the same message. You're making changes in a project you don't have right to access to. We've created a fork to the project. Yada yada yada, and so I'm going to scroll down, and I'm going to try and scroll down to uh, the portion that I want to edit. Um, and I know it was a callout block, so it's going to be a uh, block quote. And here it is. Here's the callout block, still seeing a conflict. And what I've noticed is that um, there was a block quote inside the callout block, and that's caused by these two uh, carrots. And so I know that the I know markdown formatting and I know the solution to fixing that is to delete one of the carrots. Um, and I'm actually going to uh, take a look at my notes for a second. Sorry. Um, it's, this is one of the perils of live coding. Um, so while I'm taking a look at my notes, I want to ask, are, are there any questions on what I've shown so far? And where I'm going with this? I have a quick question. Um, is it easy to, is there a way to easy, easily find where you're trying to get to in the code or do you just kind of have to skim through it? There, <laughs> if, that, you, if that question makes sense. I No, it makes complete sense. Um, I think you just kind of have to skim through it. Um, let me you see can, if I can. You control F and or command F and search for text if you know what you're looking for. Yeah, so let me, let me, undo my edit there and um, I'll go go up to the top of the page. Um, so I know that the I know that the change I want to make was in a, was in a section called still seeing a conflict. So I can I can hit control F and what's going to happen is a search bar pops up here. Um, and I can start typing still seeing and I can hit enter and it doesn't do anything. <laughs> All right, conflict. Okay, and I can, it'll start highlighting things and I can scroll down and I can try and find where I can see conflict highlighted. Um, and it is case sensitive. So um, there are, there are kind of wonkiness, but I know that it's here still seeing a conflict. If I do control F for conflict or still seeing a conflict, then it will highlight that. Um, yeah. Great, uh, so, thank you. Um, so yeah, I found the place where I want to make the edit. I make the edit. And I also, um, remember I also want to, um, I also wanted to uh, rearrange these lists so that they're in alphabetical order uh, because it bothers me. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and do that. Um, make oh, A, B, C, D, P. I think U comes before P. I can't remember. <laughs> this is the problem of doing everything live. Um, OK. So I'm going to make this list alphabetical. I'm going to make this list alphabetical. Um, so clarity comes before. U is 
after P. Thank you, Manisha. So I will fix my edit. But this is the good thing about the uh, GitHub editor. You don't like, you can keep working until you commit. And D obviously, not obviously, but D comes after C and before T. Um, and you can see that when you're working in the editor, um, like if you're working on lists, uh, if you hit enter after a list, it'll sometimes uh, autofill things for you. Um, so these are alphabetical. And I also wanted to change one little word. Um, ah, I wanted to change one little word. Um, there's this recommendation, use topic branches to segregate work. Um, I think segregate is a word that um, has a, that has a lot of different meanings to it. Um, well, and uh, it has a lot of connotation to it. So I'm going to suggest a more common word, uh, separate, um, instead, so that those connotations don't come up. Um, and I look at what I I look at what I've done, um, and I'm happy with my changes. So I'm going to write my changes, um, and I'm going to um, uh, write my commit message, which is going to be a short message first. Um, so I'm going to say um, six uh, block quote um, rearrange list alphabetical six up. And so what I'm trying to write my commit message, and I want to make a descriptive commit message, but uh, it's giving me a tip and it's saying, hey, great commit summaries contain fewer than 50 characters. And as I mentioned in the um, in the comments earlier, a, com a commit message you can think about like an email. Um, this part is really the subject matter of your email. And then here is the body of your email uh, saying what you did. So you really want this to be short and sweet because if you're looking at, if you're trying to scan through commit messages, you don't want to read a paragraph for each one. So I'm going to go ahead and um, fix this a bit um, so that it's a bit shorter. Um, and I'm going to make a description of what I did. Um, I fix the formatting of a block quote, um, rearrange list to the alphabetical. And I changed uh, segregate to separate uh, to make things simpler. So I'm going to go ahead and propose those changes. And again, I'm going to get that same screen that uh, lets me see, OK, uh, the base repository is Carbon Trace Incubator, Git, Novice, Branch, PR. The base is GH Pages. And the head repository, which is my fork, is Rav Mach Z, get novice branch PR, and I'm editing on patch one. And I can uh, go ahead and take a look, scroll down, take a look at my diff. I have one change file with seven additions and seven deletions. And you can see uh, this is what the edits look like. The rearranged, um, the re rearranged branches look like that. Um, and uh, that's, that's what I, I'm happy with those changes. So I'm going to go ahead and click on this create pull request button. Um, and again, it says, hey, looks like your first time opening a pull request in this project. Ask me to review the contributing guidelines and the code of conduct, um, which I've opened in, in new tabs not to disturb this. Um, and you can read the contributing guidelines for the Carpentries. They're the same for all uh, Carpentries repositories. And um, the code of conduct which links out to our code of conduct and reporting guidelines, which you saw linked at the beginning of this um, session. And again, um, yeah, and I'm going to interrupt because Alicia has a hand here. Alicia, go ahead. I just wanted to um, confirm that when you when you clicked the proposed changes, mm -hmm. that was the commit. The and commit then now you're working on the pull request. Yeah. Yeah. OK. So it and doesn't give you a button that says commit, but the first changes is the commit. Okay. Yeah. And this is, um, and it will, like, when you have direct access to your repository, you will see a button that says commit. And we can, I will show you, we'll show you that later, because right now I'm going to create my 
pull request. I'm going to preview to make sure that it looks okay. Um, and then I'm going to go ahead and just create that. And this is where uh, I'm going to stop sharing and I'm going to switch over to uh, Sarah uh, for um, receiving this pull request because I opened this in her own in her repository. And so she's going to show you what it looks like from the maintainer side. All right, so I'm a maintainer on this lesson, and you can see that this is the repository, Git Novice Branch PR, and I have a pull request tab open. And you can see here's the pull request that Gian put in. So as a maintainer now, it's my job to review that and take a look at it. And so I'll click on it. You can see I can read Gian's summary here. I am usually most interested in this files change tab as my second place to go. I do like to read what the, the changes are first, but then I actually want to look at what those changes are. So I'll click on this files changed button here. I have mine set to display side by side. You can have it displaying up and down as well. Um, but so here you can see, I can see the change that Jian made removing that extra greater than sign on line 317. This is telling me there's a bunch of things that remained the same in this section. So I can kind of ignore those if I don't think there's any changes in there. And then here I can see the rearrangement of this list into a new alphabetized list. And I can also, in the end of that, and then I think here's the line that changed with separate. I know it's in here somewhere. It's above there. And this is actually yeah. one oh, of the things, you. this is one of the, this is one of the, th uh, the nuances of GitHub. Sometimes you can see um, the change, the, the exact change line as you, it, if you go to the call out block change above, you can see that there's a greater than symbol that's highlighted. Um, but in this case, because the lines have changed themselves, Git doesn't know that a word has also changed. So you want to be eagled up. You, you want to, if you're a maintainer, you want to look out for that. Excellent point. Because they're rearranged, it's not matching them up the same way. And so if Jian had only changed this line and not rearranged the lines here, it would be like highlighted in a darker green block that this specific word changed. And it would be a little easier for me to see that, that word change here. Um, and I can also comment on specific lines, like maybe Jian made a change to this line that's not, that's not right, but it is, everything is right. But if I wanted to make a comment on this specific line, I can click on it and be like, this line needs a capital C or something. I'm not actually going to add that comment, but I can make line specific recommendations based on what I see here as well. And then I can review it. Um, I think that this looks pretty good. I'm not going to approve it yet because I think the order of those bullet points is not intended to be alphabetical from my review. I think they're ordered by some level of priority. Well, we think you should start with the things at the top and then go to the things at the bottom. And so I don't actually want it to be alphabetized. And so I'm going to write a message here and ask Jianfer to change that back to the original um, order of the list. But first, I'm going to start out with thanks, Jian. This is a really helpful change because I'm really excited to see the other, the fixing the format and the other pieces of it. And one uh, recommendation I have for this suggestion is that the list be ordered as it was originally. Uh, alphabetizing. And Sarah, as you're as you're typing, uh, Trisha has a hand. Sure. Trisha, go ahead. So my question is, um, is there a, a possibility of approving some of the changes Jan made, but not others, uh, instead of putting it back to Jan to change the things you didn't want to change in the lesson? Jan, do you want to answer that while I? type my message? I think um, the only question, so if the, um, if the contributor has left the allow edits by maintainers button checked, um, 
then it's possible to say, um, like it's possible to edit those uh, for you as a maintainer to um, edit those specific those specific changes that you're not um, that you don't approve of, um, and then keep the other ones and then merge it. Uh, but um, usually, it's, usually maintainers are going to ask the contributor um, to make to make changes uh, if that if that occurs because. Um, as a as a maintainer, you don't want to step on the contributor's toes, and you don't want to like make them feel like um, you don't want to kind of like wrench control from them. If that makes any sense. And I think the other piece is that someone has to change it back, right? Like all the contributions that are suggested in this pull request are linked together in that branch right now, and so. Uh, if we oftentimes best practices, if you're suggesting multiple different things, is to actually submit them as separate pull requests on separate branches. That way, the maintainer can say, "Oh, I like this change. Maybe this change needs a little bit more work." And so they can merge in the changes that are easy to merge in and continue discussion on things that might need need a little bit more discussion. So it's good to separate those those commits. Um, but in the if you put them in the same pull request, either the maintainer or the original contributor has to do the changes to make it back to whatever the, the change is. Somebody has to decouple those changes. Does that answer the question, Tricia? Any follow-ups? No, thank you. That answers it. And plus, Manisha also said the same thing in the uh, comments. In the chat. Manisha makes a really good point. Yeah, if they're in separate commits, that helps too. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you what... Oh, I'm going to... Uh, go and show you what it looks like on my end and how I can address these changes from GitHub directly. So I see on my screen that um, Sarah has made a comment. Uh, thank you, Bizarro Gian. Um, this was a really helpful change. One recommendation is to have the list ordered as it was. And I am reluctant to do that because I was so invested in making these changes, but I'm happy to. Uh, because this, uh, I want to make a contribution. And so, well, from here, it's not quite clear how exactly I'm supposed to be doing that. Um, I can go to file change, but I don't see any edit button here. Um, and what I can do is, I believe I can click on this kebab menu here in the top right, and I can go to uh, edit file. Um, and what this is going to take, what this is going to do is it's going to um, bring me to the edit view of my own file uh, in my own fork. Um, and so I'm going to click on that and I can see that I am in my own fork and I'm on Git Office Branch PR episodes 8 conflict in patch one. So I know that I'm in my own fork on, my, on the correct branch. And so I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna scroll down uh, all the way to where I made the changes. And I'm going to um, actually go back and refer to Sarah's original, uh, Sarah's comment and refer to the diff so that I can see what the original, um, what the original changes were. Uh, so if I reload my home page, um, I can actually see like, you know, I made uh, Rob Mach Z, get Office Branch PR. Um, I can go back to the original uh, fork and I can go to my pull request and I can see what the differences were. So I can rearrange them back. So I see that it's PU, not EP above the end. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and um, uh, make that change. Um, so let's go ahead and cut that and paste it down here. And cut this. And paste it here. And then I'll do the same with the other list. Um, it was try create. Uh, so I'll take the try, 
and put it up top. And then place create after try. And uh, that was those were the changes that Sarah requested. So um, re rearrange list. Um, I have rearranged the list in order of priority uh, to address uh, Sarah Stevens' comments. And I need to check to make sure that her GitHub name is correct. Um, S, -S, S Stevens 2. S Stevens 2. Okay. Um, and this is usually one of the things that uh, is nice to do to to reflect um, who requested the changes. Um, and I see that Alicia has a hand. Uh, so before I hit the commit changes uh, button, you can see that's different than uh, suggest changes. I will honor Alicia, Alicia's hand. Go ahead. Thanks, Sheon. It's kind of related to my previous question about why is it now saying commit changes instead of proposed changes? It's yeah. not clear to me how that's different. Yeah, and why. GitHub GitHub can be confusing, and you just want to shake GitHub and tell it not don't be confusing like this. But GitHub be, GitHub GitHub. Um, this is because I'm in my own fork. Um, because I own this fork. And I can make changes directly to the source code, directly to the branches without having to make a pull request first. And so that's why I have commit changes because it's going to affect my own fork directly. I think it's also because the branch already exists. When we did the proposed changes before, that patch one branch didn't exist until we clicked the proposed changes button. Mm -hmm. Now it exists and Gian actually has the option here of committing to the original branch, the one that's in our pull request called patch one, um, or creating yet another branch, like another copy that is like a separate one that could then have its own pull request or something towards it, um, which we don't want to do in this situation. It's, it would be redundant and not very useful to create yet another branch. But yeah. in some occasions, you might want to create a branch from branch, which is giving the option there. Does that help? Yes, thank you. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and click uh, commit these changes. Um, and um, it brings me back to where I was. Um, and so I can see now that uh, there are two commits. Um, and I, I have rearranged list in which just the list was rearranged. And my first commit is still there, uh, as, I, as I can see where I rearranged the list the first time. Um, but if I looked at file, if I look at files changed, now I can see that the lists are not rearranged, and uh, it's clear that segregate and separate are there. And I've accidentally introduced a new line, um, but that's in terms of markdown, that's fairly trivial. Um, so I'm going to write a comment. Uh, thank you for the suggestion, uh, Sarah. Um, I've made the changes, and I hope. You approve. Using emojis in, in messages is often encouraged. <laughs> and I can also um, indicate to Sarah that I agree with them by hitting the, by using this little emoji uh, reaction. Uh, so I will pass it off to Sarah uh, to show what happens when she approves. All right, so back in that same pull request, I can see that Jian's made a new commit and I can go look at the current version of the files changed and it looks good to me, I'm very happy with it. And so I'm gonna click this review changes button and I'm gonna approve it this time. I'm gonna say it looks, looks great. Great, will merge, very short message here. And I'll submit that review probably not strictly necessary. I submitted the review. Sometimes GitHub likes it if you've disapproved of a review in the past that you need to approve it before it can be merged. But now we're waiting for a few of the think like nice quality control things that um, Gian will tell us more about. I can tell he's anxious too. Uh, we are not. So this is one of the things, this is a feature about GitHub 
Um, if someone has never contributed to a repository before, the maintainer specifically has to approve those uh, workflows to run. Um, and this is, as Sarah said, this is a quality control check. Um, so what's happening behind the scenes? Uh, GitHub is checking to make sure that it can build um, the website um, from this pull request. Uh, and just making sure that, um, for example, you didn't accidentally delete um, all of the files in the in the repository. Um, uh, but this is some this is something that uh, will happen for every pull request. And if you if once your pull request is merged, then any other pull request you do, you don't have to do this. Do you think I should wait for it, Gian, or should I go ahead um, and merge it? In this instance, because you know that only text was changed, mm -hmm. um, it's safe to merge um, yeah. without the checks passing. Yeah, I'm going to go ahead and merge it because I know that only a few lines were changed. There's no big files deleted or anything. If there were bigger changes to the website, like different pages rearranged, and I wanted to make sure that there wasn't going to cause any errors when it, those changes were rendered and displayed in the live web page, um, I would wait for this to complete so I could check the checks. Um, and once it's completed and it's successful and it didn't find any errors, this merge pull request button will turn green. So it'll be a little bit more approving of me merging these changes. Right now it's like not quite sure, but um, I'm sure. So I'm going to go ahead and click the merge pull request button. And merging is also a commit. So I have to add in a commit that, and it actually has a nice message. It's saying merge pull request from uh, backwards Gian um, and the patch branch. And then it gives that nice summary that Gian wrote as well with the commit. And I'll go ahead and confirm that merge. And now is the process that the website actually is going to go re-render and make those changes. It'll be a couple minutes probably, but eventually we'll be able to see those changes pop up in the conflicts episode. So we'll wait, uh, well, we'll come back to it and see if it's changed after we talk a little bit. Um, and I want to show one last thing, um, sure. cleaning up. Uh, so I want to show what it looks like on my end after the merge happened, um, because this is the experience that you're gonna have. Um, so you can see that it's turned purple. Um, the merge happened. She created a new commit. And now I have this message that says, hey, um, your, you, your pull request is successfully merged and closed. And now you can delete your branch if you want to. And this is where, um, this is where I can, uh, every branch is its own little world. And it can exist indefinitely. But really, I want to make things clean. So I'm going to hit this little button that says delete branch. And um, that's okay because uh, it's not something that I really uh, wanted to keep around. And if I wanted to update my 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 own pull request, um, if I want to update my version of the repository, I can go back to this. Not this repository. I can go back to my to uh, my version of the repository, and I see oh, this branch is three commits behind. Carpentry's incubator GH pages. And I can click on this little button that says sync fork. Um, and so the branch is out of date. And I can click on update branch. And this synchronizes my fork to have the same commit that I just made, um, you know, that Sarah just made for the pull request. And now I'm ready to contribute another, um, another pull request if I wanted to. Um, so. That's that in a hat. Um, we'd be happy to take any questions. Um, and I think we have some extra, Sarah, Sarah has some, some other words of wisdom that she wants to impart. While you think about your, your questions, I did reload the page and you can see that rendering error where it was kind of using a strange block quote is not happening anymore. And we now have separate here as the word. So those changes are now live on the web page. And when people teach this lesson, they'll see those those additions that Gian made. OK, the last kind of subject I want to talk about a little bit with this is the the feelings component, right? You're contributing to the lessons and we really want 
people in the carpentries community to come and bring their experience and contribute to the lessons. But sometimes those things are not necessarily going to get accepted. Um, they're still valuable. I think it's always worth putting that into text and suggesting it. Maybe a maintainer thinks it's out of scope for a lesson. For one example, I have an incubator lesson that teaches a tool called Docker and there's so many times that people teach it and they're like, there's this one little thing that I think is useful to it. And the maintainers and I always come back and we're like, is this useful to researchers or is it useful to software developers? And that's what we use as one of our criteria for whether we're going to add new material to the lesson because we are teaching it for our audience as researchers. And so we want to make sure that the lesson doesn't expand too big with things that are not as useful for researchers. And so there are times when we have to say, no, this isn't quite in scope for our current lesson. Um, sorry, we can't accept this contribution at that time. But it's still worth putting those things in because there's a record of them. Maybe in a few years, it turns out that one of those features is really useful for, for researchers and we keep getting people suggesting it, we're going to think about it again. We're going to say, oh, you know, several times this, this feature has been brought up. Let's put this into our lesson. Let's actually add it. And so it's really important that we like continue to try and improve the lessons. It's sometimes hard when you're a maintainer or a contributor when there's a, a something that's suggested that as a maintainer, maybe you think doesn't quite fit in the lesson or there's a reason not to accept it. You still want to thank your the contributor and make sure that they feel like they that you're happy that they suggested it because all contributions are welcome in the carpentries community. Um, and so then coming up, being kind about how we decide to make those decisions and making those decisions as a maintainer is easier as a team. So I have not just my opinion about this lesson, we're a community of instructors. And so whenever I look at a lesson, I can also rely on my fellow maintainers and, and talk to them and be like, hey, do you think we should include this? And then we can come to a consensus and make a decision about it. And so we want you to contribute to the lessons. Not all less, not all contributions might actually make it into the lessons, but I still encourage you to continue to suggest things. I, I know I've made lesson contributions that people have, have decided, oh, I, I don't think this is right right now, or let's let's hold this for later, or this this doesn't fit in the scope. And so that happens and don't uh, be too hard on yourself if that happens to you. Continue to contribute and suggest those things. That's what makes the Carpentries lessons really useful for a lot of different people. Um, and if you're really uh, very passionate about a particular lesson and you want to shape the direction that that lesson is going in, you can volunteer to become a maintainer or a curriculum advisor for those lessons. And then you can help shape the direction that a particular lesson goes in. And so if you find yourself uh, wanting to help influence that for a particular lesson, I highly recommend uh, watching out for the maintainer and curriculum advisor calls that go out to the community because then you can get involved in that level of of lesson maintenance. Okay, I'm gonna hand back to Gian to wrap us up with some next steps. Thank you, Sarah. Um, and yeah, uh, I think that um, the next step uh, for this is um, if you're if you're up for it, um, we would really encourage you to take a look at this, um, the help wanted issues and see if you can make a contribution. Um, this is, this, this is a great way to practice. Um, and again, uh, uh, it's, it may be that your, your pull request is, uh, accepted, maybe not, but, uh, this is a really good way to practice and, um, just get a feel for how, what it's like to work on GitHub. And remember, um, like, even if you, uh, uh, it's, it's, uh, this is all about practice. They're working in a branch is a way of um, kind of giving yourself a, a place to play, a sandbox, if you want. You can make any changes you want, um, and it won't really matter until it's merged. Um, so uh, it's, uh, and this is how we collaborate. We get uh, and get feedback from each other. Um, so I would encourage everybody to go to the Help Wanted Issues page. Find something that you want to that you want to work on, um, and comment on the on the issue that you want to work on it, um, and then um, suggest the change. Um, and we'd be happy to take any questions um, at this time. I think we're we have do we have half an hour left, Sarah? Yes. 
Okay, so um, we have half an hour left, which means that this is the time for you to um, practice and uh, ask questions as you're going along. Um, uh, so I will, um, I guess, wrap up. And I'm really glad that um, you all were here and were asking questions and uh, following along. Um, and Alicia has a question, so I will go ahead and honor that question. Go ahead. Um, thanks. I, I was curious, because you mentioned this, Gian, about if we were going to make, uh, um, if we were going to be branching um, something <laughs> that we need, that we should comment on the issue that we're working on it. Is there a place where the Carpentries has a list of these are the best practices to follow when you're creating pull requests? And um, so it we're not creating more challenges for maintainers than needs there needs to be. <laughs> I would imagine the Hacktoberfest um, blog posts would probably have that. Let me take a quick look. I don't know off the top of my head. But we really should have this, shouldn't we? <laughs> uh, just to confirm, do we want to keep the recording still going on, or should we just stop the recording during these questions? I'm happy either way, Sarah. I think one last thing I want to mention before we finish the recording is that if you're excited about developing lessons in addition to being a maintainer or a curriculum advisor lessons, you can start creating lessons in the incubator as well. That There are lots of new lessons there. I think I have three or four. Um, and so as you're thinking about creating new lessons, the Carpentries is working on piloting new lesson development training to help research, help new lesson developers work with the infrastructure, the Carpentries template, um, and sorry, Workbench, and the new will be Workbench, um, and uh, like help support instructors or lesson developers in creating really useful lessons and using best practices in how to develop those lessons. And so watch out for calls for collaborative lesson developer training, because we're going to be hosting that probably again later this year um, to help people get started on any ideas they have of new lessons they'd like to see in the Carpentries Incubator. Um, Yes, and Alicia gave a nice link to the lightning talk that Toby gave on this. So please uh, take a look at that if you're interested in developing new lessons. Okay, and then I think we're probably good to stop the recording and we'll stay around for as people try and try this out on their own, looking at the help wanted page, making comments on issues and try and do pull requests and we'll help answer any questions you have as you try that process. Thanks, Gian and everyone.